In today's Tim Tries episode, I'm having a look at Chakra UI view. But because I don't actually know how those component libraries work, I've actually never used one. I thought it would be worthwhile to ask Jonathan Bakewa, the creator of Chakra UI, to take me through it. So we are looking at it together and with that extra context that I gained, I will actually try Chakra UI. I am really excited. Let's roll. I think we are good. Ready? I'm ready as always. All right. In the intro, I probably mm -hmm. said your name completely wrong. So every time oh. I do a video with someone, I ask them, can you please say your name the way it's supposed to be pronounced? My name is Jonathan Bakebwa. Oh, I don't think I was, I was not that far off. <laughs> Anyways, um, so in this video, it's not really an interview, but it's it's kind of like one. It's more like the Tim mm -hmm. Try series where I try something mm -hmm. new that I've never tried before. But then in this mm -hmm. time, it's special because I am now doing this with the author of the thing I'm trying, which is kind of special, yeah. right? So, it is. Um, of course, we're talking about Chakra UI. Um, mm -hmm. Would you mind telling the audience what Chakra UI is and then maybe mm -hmm. why you think you felt like building this thing? Why was it needed? Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, so Chakra UI is a component library that allows you to build um, accessible web view, Vue.js web applications um, with ease. And it also gives you the ability to modify the, the, the visuals of the components without much complexity. Um, so you get the added advantage of um, accessibility because all the components are are built with a tight adherence to the WAI ARIA spec for uh, authored components. And you also don't have to lock into a one design system. So you can, if you, if you care about design, if you care about the appearance of your components, uh, Chakra UI is a library that I think will interest you. All right. Now that we know a little bit more about Chakra UI, why not just try it? Right, this is the part of the Tim Tries where you will either see me sweat, be salty or happily surprised. Um, honestly, I don't really know where I'll land on this because it's probably one of the first times I've ever tried to use something like Chakra. So I decided why not um, rebuild the header of my website and maybe this hero component with this text element and this extra image here. Just Let's just do that part and see how it goes. Um, so currently there is a local host Nuxt running with Chakra. This is completely empty. And I thought, um, based on a bit of reading I did on the framework, let's start with um, some of the documentation side of things, right? So um, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can look at, like there's some style props on the boxes. So this is like margin of two, and that margin of two then goes into some sort of specification of what two means somewhere. So I'm, I'm gonna have to learn all that a little bit. Um, what I'm interested in is now is this, the customizing of the theme. This is also what you see in Tailwind, where you can basically set your own colors, your own spaces, your own fonts. In this case, also my own breakpoints. And this is a pretty interesting part about this. And um, as you can see here, there's this theme provider that you that is added to the app. And I saw that in Nuts that's already added. So when you look at my code base, um, I'm loading my font, which is Lato, and I also just load it in um, the head of Nuxt. I just load it from Google now, so it's easy. And then um, my website has a bunch of different blues, and I have five of them. And then we have red and yellow. So I just set up my color so we can actually use them now inside um, when I, you know, in my code. Um, let's remove this stuff. And we need a box, right? See, box. Um, please bear with me for when I make typos. I know live coding isn't the easiest. I'm just gonna try, right? So um, for now, let's just put my name in it. And there he is, okay. So this background, it needs to have a background. So I just saw on the docs, it's just BG. Um, like when you go here, I, I just went to the, the box documentation and there we have background and we have width 
and padding. So I'm gonna just look at this and kind of use it. So my background is gonna be blue too, which is blue too, which is like a nice dark one. Then um, we're gonna need some padding. I'm just gonna do number four because I think that might be one of their standard numbers. Uh, oh, there we go. Uh, color is white. There we go. And then if you look at my website, there's this little one pixel border here. So I think what I should do is border color equals blue three, and then border bottom equals one pixel. No idea if that worked. Let's inspect. Oh, there it is. One pixel solid. Okay, well, because there's nothing below it, it's hard to say, but that actually worked. So I'm kind of going off of just standard CSS and it seems to work. So there's shorthand, because I can probably also write padding here. And then it does the same thing. Okay, so there's some smart shorthand or I can write whatever I want and then it chooses for me. I don't like how it formats this stuff. Let's just, come on. Okay, whatever. Um, okay, so now inside, of course, we have my little logo here and then my uh, text here that is bold and whatever. So let's first steal that logo, open this image. Oh, this is actually base 64. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna steal the base 64. So I think what we'll need is inside this thing. So we have another box and that box is actually aligned to the left and inside it flexes with those two things. So why don't we go with another box? And then it should display flex. And then inside we want an image. Approximately 10 hours later. I think I did it. I didn't go into too many details, but I think it's there now. Um, I probably sped this video up by a lot because it took me a while to actually code everything. Anyways, so um, I did decide to go with the aspect ratio box around um, the little logo in the header. Um, but I managed, you know, to use the aspect ratio also for the hero. I added a bunch of boxes, um, my titles, everything is there. And you know what? Not a single line of CSS was written. Everything was done with just this thing. And you know what? It's not that much code. And probably if I split this up in actual few components and then use Chakra stuff, it can also be pretty clean, I guess. So when you look at the result, so this is my actual website and this is now the result. So as you can see, I didn't really specify the, the, the sizes as much, but you know, it's, it's decent. It's really pretty close. Um, I, I'm pretty happy with that result. Um, I think if I put some actual time into this, I can probably use it um, for real. However, um, I, it's not my favorite outcome of how the HTML looks. Then again, who looks at the HTML? If this thing works really well and it's still semantic and it's still ac accessible, we're good to go. All right, back to the interview. And imagine, like I'm imagining, right? Because like I said, it, when we were discussing this before, I'm a bit old school. Mm -hmm. I just use HTML mm -hmm. because HTML is, yeah. well, it's, I don't even mm -hmm. know how old it is, but there you go, it works. Yeah. So now mm -hmm. you came it up does. with a bunch of components that then mm -hmm. output to that HTML, but Mm -hmm. Did you feel like you needed that, or did you only mm -hmm. need that because of the uh, because mm -hmm. of the birth of React and few like frameworks mm -hmm. that you just added mm -hmm. smart stuff, or did you feel like mm -hmm. HTML didn't have enough? What what's mm -hmm. the the thinking there? 
Um, HTML is not that, it's not that HTML doesn't have enough. It's just that it's taxing um, in terms of like time, uh, in terms of the uh, cognitive like um, uh, resources you need to associate to like encapsulating like behavior. Like uh, if you don't have like the, the ability to create units. And I think this is where like, I think frameworks assist this kind of behavior uh, very, very well, like view or like react. So um, that was one of the, the, like, the motivations. It's not that HTML doesn't have it. Like you said, it, it all like, you know, ends up being HTML in the browser. Um, but, you know, having JavaScript, having a programming language behind encapsulating like accessibility um, uh, for, for a specific component certainly makes it a lot easier. So you don't have to rewrite um, these behaviors um, for yourself. So you talk about accessibility, like you mentioned it a couple of times. And you know what? I am mm -hmm. really for that. Like for me, everything is mm -hmm. accessibility first. But what I've learned yeah. over the years is that accessibility is not always just component driven. It's more component mm -hmm. in context driven. Mm -hmm. So yes. how do you manage things like focus loops inside pop-ups mm -hmm. and these kind of things mm -hmm. with the UI mm -hmm. library that actually has only components? How does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually true. So uh, like when it comes to um, accessibility, like there's uh, different kinds of it. Like there's the part for cognitive um, related accessibility, rotor accessibility. This is where things like keyboard management comes in. Um, you have um, uh, they're using the correct, you know, ARIA, ARIA attributes as well for, for representing state. And so because of these like different, um, let's say spheres or different facets of, implementing accessibility um, it, it also it gives it it also introduces a bit of complexity because and this is probably why not all people who write components uh, do access implement the accessibility to the to the exact spec because it's just complicated to do but the advent of compute component driven design allows us to define the context of the component and also allows us to encapsulate this behavior um, within this component the, the JavaScript that's related with it so um, with Chakra UI, it was, it was uh, actually, I was really very thankful for this concept of component-driven design because it allows us to encapsulate all this behavior in a single unit that you can always uh, have the, the, the assurance that, okay, I will always have uh, a focus trap inside the model uh, every time I use it. So um, yeah, that's, that's, that's how it was, um, that's how I was able to like, I am actually very interested because you made some really good points. And you know what? I think a lot of people have in mind, oh, I'm going to make a framework. I'm going to try this mm -hmm. and then fail and never push <laughs> through. But you actually finished or at least there's a release, yeah. right? People yeah. use it. Yeah. So I'm actually mm -hmm. very interested to see how it holds up against my old school standards, mm -hmm. but also against how it fits in the view context. So, mm -hmm. man, I really want to thank you for taking the time to explain this to mm -hmm. me. I know we mm -hmm. kept it relatively short, but that also yeah. allows me to now actually go in, try this and feel myself struggling, <laughs> trying to understand what you've, what you've done. <laughs> but I'm assuming there's good yeah. um, documentation and everything. So um, thanks yeah, again, and, man. And thanks you, for joining. You know, the honor is mine. And if you do run into any like issues, I mean, feel free to tweet at me. Um, oh man, I will. Don't worry. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much uh, for uh, accommodating me. I appreciate it. Cool, man. I hope to speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. <laughs>